Hi guys, Cthulhu here with another quick video about Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Uh, this time I'm going to go over a few more things specific to Insect Glaive, possibly a few more um, generic tips for everybody. But I figured it'd be a good chance to uh, talk about some of the things that I love about my favorite weapon in 4G. Uh, but as we, before we get into that, I wanted to cover a quick couple of things um, as far as options that will be available in the retail game. Uh, on the, you'll notice when I pull up the option menu here, um, before I select anything, there's buttons down there to customize your panels on your touchscreen. This is a big help for people who actually want to actually use the touchscreen, not use a Circle Set Pad Pro, so they can set up their touch controls and buttons. I have a very nice layout that I enjoy a lot uh, that I have on my Japanese one that I'll be changing up. Uh, right now, we're also looking at the various chat functions. You'll notice that the first three tabs are for custom callouts that you can do whatever. The last two are very specific to auto calls outs. Uh, you can't edit these in the demo, but when the real game comes out, you'll be able to put in your own text there and kind of customize your, your hunter's personality. I did it a lot in 4G, and it was a lot of fun seeing everyone's custom things for when they rode a monster or dropped a bomb or a trap, things like that. It's really fun to kind of create your own thing. But now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the Insect Glaive here. Uh, the basic, I'm not going to go into a lot of super long depth into details on it because, well, at this I'm not great at making weapon guides. I don't ever really dig deep into frame counts, damage thresholds, calculations, things like that when I play Monster Hunter. I like to play Monster Hunter for fun. It's not, I don't min-max it to the extent that some people do. Um, Shepard is a great example of someone who really enjoys the the numbers aspect of Monster Hunter, um, likes to maximize everything. I like to be a little stylistic a lot of times. Uh, that's why a lot of times in the podcast and stuff, you'll see me with full armor sets instead of mixed armor sets until really late in 3U. And, and 4G, I've just really enjoyed the full sets. Um, but, so, basic things, um, real quick. Here you're seeing that I'm using the bug while on the way to the monster pick up some actual uh, essences. The yellow essence there is a armor buff. Uh, it works to, you know, get you a little bit of armor going. Uh, the next area here, I've hit a jaggy, I believe it is, uh, and pick up the white essence. This is a uh, movement speed as well as jump height increaser. It also works as a catalyst for the other two uh, buffs from uh, the orange or yellow and red. It essentially makes the defense or attack boost stronger. Um, in the case of the red buff, uh, it also, um, when you have the red buff, it, red buff is more your small attack when you first get it plus it instant makes your attacks faster and whatnot you'll you'll notice a big difference from how i was attacking in the very opening of the quest in the camp and how i'm attacking now and that's because of the red buff you also see that here i picked up the golden boy uh combo of all three uh big effect here is it gives you it's like defense up medium uh up, attack up medium earplugs uh like low grade earplugs not high grade uh, that work against all the roars here on this Tetsukabra, but it doesn't actually work against uh, larger roars, say, as like from a Diablos or uh, Savage Joe. So, here we're also looking at some of the terrain features. Uh, so people wanted to know more about how the terrain interactions work in the game. So, here I'm climbing the wall, and that's a jump attack. Um, if you're on the wall, you press A. And you'll leap off like that, and then when you're in the midair, you attack. Any weapon can do that. That's not unique to the insect glaive at all, but it's a lot of fun to uh, set up things like that. So it's something to consider when you're fighting in the rooms. Look for webbings, vines, things like that. A lot of there's a lot of walls and stuff you can climb on in the game. Uh, there's even some monsters that will actually use the walls a lot in their actual attacks. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, so basic concept with the insect glaive is of course buff management uh, you have to keep your buffs up by default the buffs have a 60 second duration timer which isn't long um, there are some tricks you can use to extend it out a little bit um, sometimes in the quest you'll see me get like the red and white buff that'll give me my extended attack combos faster attacks whatnot 
Um, but then I'll hold off on grabbing the yellow until my white and red buffs start blinking, showing they're about ready to expire. What this then allows you to do is, as soon as you pick up the triple combo, it resets the timer completely. So you'll be able to, essentially you might get a minute and 45 seconds out of your red-white combo if you pick up the golden boy at some point in. Now, before you get to the golden boy mode, you can refresh the timer on any single buff by picking up another essence again. So if I just had the red and white, if I picked up red first, it would expire first, I'd still have the white. Then maybe I pick up red again, but then white's going to expire real quick. So oftentimes, picking up that triple combo helps you equalize your buff rotation so you're not trying to get single hits uh, from essences as much. Now, there is a unique thing to the Insect Glaive at the end game of G rank. Uh, depending on how you level up your Insect Glaive, which I'll go over a little bit later, uh, your bug will get special abilities, and one of them that you can pick up is a double duration of a various buff type. Uh, red is the most common one that people build for because it is your most strong and powerful buff that you need to have all the time. At which point then, of course, you've got two minute buff durations on these things, which is amazing. It cuts down the amount of time you're having to go out and um, recover your essences over and over again. Um, it's most definitely something to keep in mind. However, there is some issues with that, which we'll go over here in a second. Uh, but here you're seeing just the basic attack combos. Uh, I will post a link to Gaijin Hunter's weapon tutorial for the Insect Glaive, because he does a really good job of explaining the various combos you can do if you want to maximize things. Um, as well as, you know, the actual number details. Like I said, I'm not great on it. I leave it to other people, and Gaijin, Hunter, Gaijin Hunter's video is amazing. I highly recommend anyone who's interested in the Insect Glaive, check it out. Uh, so here, I'm showing off another neat feature, uh, the Pheromone Shot, uh, which is something that's kind of underutilized, I think. Uh, I may try and use it a little bit more in the US version. But the shot you saw me shoot there at the beginning, if you hold R down, you'll get the little aiming reticle. When you release it, it's going to shoot out a pheromone shot at the spot. Whatever spot hits, it'll have that little puff cloud of pheromones. That tells you what essence a your kinsec staff or your kinsect will pull from that part of the monster's body. But it also acts as a homing beacon for your bug. So normally when you send your bug out with R and X, it goes straight out in a straight line in whatever direction you're facing. Which, you know, if you know that and plan it, it works out great. However, sometimes, you know, fights get a little crazy. You just need that one red buff. You can get a quick insect uh, pheromone shot off accidentally or on purpose, whatnot. And you can aim the wrong way and hold R and X. And your bug will go off to that pheromone shot at spot. Uh, duration on it, I believe, is right around 20, 30 seconds. It's not very long. Uh, but it does give a good spot to... Uh, home in on bugs, which I think I did a little bit of testing before and really liked a certain setup with that, which I'll, um, in which you build a bug that is designed to do a lot of damage. Typically, you're, most of the people will build their bugs for speed, um, but there is a specific path you can take bugs to increase their damage. And uh, if you get a KO bug, because uh, they become in uh, blunt slash KO and then piercing damage types. Uh, you can then rack up some pretty good KO uh, status on monsters and oftentimes get a decent amount of KOs. I actually had a quest in 4G the other day uh, with, in which I stole the KO from a hammer user because I, uh, I, I managed to hit them in the face with my bug. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the cautionary tales for Insect Glaive. Um, the weapon is a total blast to, to play. I love it. It's one of the over-the-top weapons. Almost a little over-the-top for my normal Monster Hunter taste with it jumping around all over the place and whatnot, but it's so much fun to play, I just can't stop using it. Um, however, Insect Glaive is a weird weapon type when it comes to actual upgrade paths and whatnot. 
Uh, each glaive is attached to a singular bug. So you, if you want, say, a Ceregios glaive, like uh, is in the demo, but you want to be able to have it with a attack bug and a speed bug. Well, you're going to have to level up two separate Ceregios staffs with different bugs. Uh, this is kind of painful. Um, the upgrade costs of a single staff uh, comes in around 300 to 450, 500,000 zenny on the zenny cost alone. Then on top of that, there is a cost of uh, you're using for the optimum bug pass, you use store bought insect food, which comes costs 144 points, MOGA points. Per food and you're gonna use somewhere I want to say it's around 120 so you're looking at a lot of MOGA points spent to up make you know the best bugs now there is bug food you can find out in various wilderness and stuff whatnot which are great and it might be a little bit easier to figure out using those in English however there are very easy set paths when using the store-bought food, which means you're probably going to be using that. Now, regardless of what glaive you make, whether it is a single upgrade uh, endgame G-rank glaive that has it's in its final form, or if you're using the bone rod glaive that you start out with the game, every glaive has 12 upgrade levels. And this is essentially your bug. Um, most of the glaives will change forms in the upgrade path as you're leveling them up. And so you're going to have a lot of things uh, to feed them. Uh, basic things when you start out is bones. You're going to use a lot of bones of various types. I'm not, I can't list the actual types because it changes slightly per uh, glaive. So I'm just going to give you the overview of a lot of the things you're going to need. Um, but bones is going to be an early one. You're going to need a lot of them. Worms, frogs. You'll be making lots of mega dash, or not mega dash uses, but mega uh, demon drugs, mega demon drugs, and mite pills. Uh, if you're going to main insect glaive, you're going to have to kill a lot of elder dragons in high rank, um, specifically for elder dragon bones, as it's, they're the only means to acquire them. And the drop rate's not great. And every glaive will require at least two of them. Now, for the most part, the every glaive has just these generic resources. And then some of them, of course, will have what you normally expect from your normally leveling of a bug. Or of a weapon. Like, you know, if you're upgrading a Diablos weapon to a Diablos insect staff and it happens to the bat the path takes it down to black Diablos, of course. You'll need a few Black Diablos parts, but it's typically not as many of a part as you would other weapons because you're using so many of these other generic resources. Um, bugs is another one. You'll find a lot of Flutterflies is, I believe, the may or may not be the translated name. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's been a while. Uh, that you'll need for uh, the Glaive as well. So. You're using a lot of these normal gathered resources that don't get used quite as much on other weapons, but they're used extensively on the insect glaive. So you will have to probably do a lot of gathering, a lot of farming for MOGA points, which means free hunts in the woods or whatnot to get those points up uh, so you can actually upgrade the bugs. Now, the b upgrade path for bugs is highly important because they change so dramatically depending on how you feed them and what your final form of the bug is. Um, Gaijin Hunter again has an awesome video going through the path for the double duration power bug, uh, which is pretty much a good standard for anybody to use. Um, in his video, he talks about uh, finishing it off with power, so it's kind of a, a moderately fast bug with a decent width, like a maxed out power, which is great. I think that's a wonderful way to do it. A lot of other people uh, tend to favor more speedy bugs, uh, so there, you, if you get to that point, you can kind of adjust it to be a little bit faster. However, outside of the double duration bug, you've got ones that are like uh, 
can carry two essences at once. So when you send it out and it hits a monster part, it picks hits the red spot. Well, then you send it back out, or you command it to change direction, it hits a white part. Now it's going to bring back both those parts to you, uh, those essences. So it can help speed up the acquisition of the Golden Boy mode. Another one is increases the effectiveness of the Cure Essence, which is a red, green essence, which is apparent on most monsters, um, typically from the tail, uh, but not always. So you'll pick up that, it comes back. Typically it's, I want to say a little bit more than a herb, a little bit less than a potion, but with the enhanced healing effect, it's pretty much a mega potion uh, every heal. So another thing um, that I wanted to talk about, that's not so much insect glaive related, and you've probably seen it here in the video a little bit, is uh, other terrain features that you can take advantage of a lot. Um, little, if you haven't played the demo, you if you if or you have, you may or may not have seen a lot of people using it here. Any weapon has the ability to get jump attacks off of monsters. However, the insect glaive and lance are the only two that have on-demand uh, calls for jumps, uh, Insect Glaive doing it via R and A uh, through the pole vault that you'll see I do constantly throughout the video. Uh, Lance can do it during its charge, uh, which causes it to jump up in the air and, and do a lance attack. Other than that, you'll oftentimes want to use ledges uh, in the areas, various maps as monsters near one. You can roll, is my typical way off a ledge or just walk off a ledge and you'll kind of do a hop and then you can attack while in midair and get a nice decent uh, jump attack on which would be very beneficial uh, anyone who you'll probably see in the, the video again uh, the jump mini game is very simple when the monster face on the bar is green press attack when it starts to uh, go red hold R um, you can hold R all the time, but if you're low, if you're fairly low on stamina, you won't recover stamina if you're still holding R after it's thrashing around. Um, play with a little bit; it's not too hard. You'll get it down pretty quick. Each of the monsters have different tells uh, when they're going to thrash and whatnot. Another general rule of thumb is that the camera is zoomed in on the hunter. You're free to attack all you want. Uh, you're not going to get knocked off right away, but as soon as the camera pulls back hold R because the monster's about ready to do a thrash or a roar or something like that. For people who are not riding the monster, do not hit the monster um, unless you want to knock the rider off. If you happen to reach the monster's flinch threshold while a person is riding the monster, it will kick them off immediately. No ride, monster will not have the knockdown state. You'll be back to fighting it like normal. Uh, this typically flinching doesn't happen if you have a low at power bug, but insect glaive users need to be aware that even if your bug has no power built into it, it is still minimum power. You can still flinch a monster from trying to pick up essences during the ride. It's not common, and I oftentimes will use the ride as a chance to pick up a buff, but you do it with the understanding that if you flinch the monster, it's your fault because you just should avoid attacking monsters during uh, rides at all and your bug will happen to flinch it. The pheromone shot will not so if you want to still get a heads up during the ride and want to mark the spot that you want to pick the buff off right away afterwards, use the pheromone shot. It's a perfect time to do it. Typically a monster will be fairly still. Uh, let's see. Other than that guys, I think um, that's pretty much the basics I wanted to cover. I'm really looking forward to For You a lot. I'm really looking forward to hunting with the community again. And uh, I will have uh, stuff up on Teamwork Cast regularly uh, for hunting parties for various times. Uh, some of them will be more of a stream event announcement and not so much a pure hunting party. I typically put in the description of those, like this is a announcement of an event, not an actual hunting party. Uh, the hunting parties themselves are typically open for anyone to join, fill in a spot. They'll typically be for an hour at a time when I do those, um, and they'll typically come in blocks. I know last time I checked all of the events I had scheduled for the 13th are filled. I will probably put some more events up for the 14th, uh, probably 
Saturday, I think. Saturday or Sunday. So keep an eye on that for that if you want to join in some hunts. Uh, for our YouTube viewers, I want to also uh, let people know that there is we are I will be doing YouTube streams uh, for three for you pretty regularly. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel to get event notifications for when we go live on that. Uh, additionally, we are on Twitch uh, for Teamwork Cast. Uh, every stream I do will be on Twitch for the most part. YouTube's Twitches will be for specific events. Uh, however, all the streams from the 13th will be on both streams at the same time. So regardless, if you want to catch us on YouTube or on Twitch, feel free to stop by, say hello. Uh, you never know. I might open up the room a little bit early for some random views. Uh, and additionally, keep an eye out. I will be doing some For You Demo Hunt streams in the coming days. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to any other questions or things you'd like to talk about or me or the other crew to talk about in the coming days. Feel free to leave a comment in the video. I try and read the read through every comment each day, uh, typically when I first get up and kind of respond to things that I can. And with that, guys, I hope you enjoy this. I hope to see you all in 4 Ultimate, and we'll see you guys soon. Take care.